Welcome to a nippy Sunday morning, 16th of December. So uh, I'm going for a short walk this morning, about six or seven miles, something like that, uh, around the village near where I live called Codsall, just to the north of Wolverhampton and um, a few points of interest around the way. So uh, let's get on with it. This is a modern memorial in the village of Bilbrook. Of course this year is 2018 so it's 100 year centenary of the end of the First World War and they've added this new piece, the Spitfire on top because there was a Spitfire factory or a components factory nearby. Yeah, that's the Staffordshire Knot, the symbol of the county. In 2012 to mark Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee. I chose this route today um, for a number of reasons. One is to keep my walking going, um, which I'll talk about a bit later on. Uh, the other one is because this particular short walk takes in short sections of um, two well-known long distance footpaths. Um, the Staffordshire Way and the Monarchs Way. It's great architecture. Really interesting, look at that. I'm only on the Staffordshire Way for a short distance going down into the village of Codsall. It's less than a mile actually, but uh, then it branches off and meets with the, uh, the Monarch's Way, just on the other side of the village. Into Codsall village now, and there's uh, three good pubs in Codsall. This is a great one here. It's actually a craft beer pub now with nice food and nice outside, just across the road. You've always got to have a pub just across the road, haven't you? A bit more traditional, the Bull, great atmosphere in the Bull, great beer. There's a small Victorian railway station at Codsall too. And that's the third pub. They converted the waiting room years ago into a cracking little pub. 1883. Loads of, as you'd expect, loads of train memorabilia inside, everywhere, hanging up on the walls, and uh, photos and old signs. Nice beer too, can't lose. I've been doing. 10,000 steps every day <laughs> all through the autumn every day try and keep try and keep trim keep fit it's nothing major no big heavy rucksack no slogging up hills but uh, just keeping on top of it uh, because in May I plan to do the West Highland Way and then the Sky Trail um, so I'm enjoying myself getting ready for those researching it all, looking at the routes and the maps and everything, thinking about what extra kit I'll need if it's colder up there. So I'm really enjoying that and I don't want to uh, have to shed a load of weight at the start of springtime. So I'm keeping, I'm keeping fit. First style. And it's well muddy, ah, sloppy water. Right, here's the Monarch's Way marker. Right, the King's Crown, the Royal Oak symbol, and it's way marked all the way. The Monarch's Way 
it's 600 odd miles um, starting in Worcester in the west of England going up to here we're almost at the northerly point now right in the central England just north of Codsall and uh, then it loops right the way back down again to Yeovil onto the south coast and then along eastwards on the south coast and uh, eventually terminates down there and there's an interesting reason why well the monarch in question was King Charles II who did this route <laughs> he wasn't wearing Gore-Tex he was fleeing after the Battle of Worcester in 1651 from the parliamentary forces of Oliver Cromwell in the last battle of the English Civil War and he obviously represented the Royalist side who didn't want to have Parliament and his father stopped Parliament for 11 years and Oliver Cromwell and his mates didn't like that and so the English Civil War began, the Roundheads uh, against the Royalists and the Roundheads being the Parliamentarians and the Royalists obviously in support of the King and uh, his father Charles I was the King at that time, there were two battles, two wars rather which lasted uh, till 1649 Charles I was then captured, tried and beheaded. Parliamentarians then took control and it still didn't end there. It went on for another couple of years until 1651. The Royalists still had a lot of support, particularly in the north of England and in Scotland. Um, and that led to a decisive battle at Worcester, about 40 miles south of here in 1651 between the Royalist forces of Charles II and the Parliamentarian forces of Oliver Cromwell. Well by that point Cromwell outnumbered them about 2 to 1, 30,000 against 14,000 ish and they won decisively. King fled, shed his armour on horseback, off he went north basically on the run and his journey going from village to village protected no doubt by royalist sympathizers hidden away whilst being pursued by the parliamentarians led him all the way up here past Codsell <laughs> along this path that I'm walking now so they say um, to a place a few miles north of here called Boscobel House and that's the most north that he reached and there it's said that he was uh, almost discovered by a parliamentarian patrol and he hid outside the house inside a large oak tree which still stands today and it's called the Royal Oak at Boscobel House. That's when he decided I think to uh, come back south and flee for France course he had to give London a very wide berth so he went back down all down the west side of England all the way down to Yeovil in the southwest of England and then along the south coast eastwards direction across the south downs of England and uh, eventually over the channel to France and exile another way marker and the ship on there represents the ship that carried Charles II to France on his escape to exile. Just made a schoolboy error which I've got to own up to. Battery ran out. <sighs> Obviously didn't charge it up enough. Thought I could make it round. Nope. So the only thing to do, because I wanted to get this walk and this vid done today, was walk home, charge up, get a lift back. <laughs> oh well, at least it's not raining and I've got two hours of daylight left, 
so I better get a move on. <laughs> Nice house, old house being done up, nice. Look at this sign here, barely make it out. So, Charles II was in exile uh, until the death of Oliver Crom Cromwell, seven years after that, after he fled. Um, 1658 that was and um, a couple of years after that they invited him back to England where apparently he got a, a very warm welcome and uh, but obviously Parliament remained after that interesting styles here it's like an assault course up over this one whoa slippy wood be careful and down over this sort of duckboard bit. Well, I kept right to the edge of the fields all the way around to avoid treading on the farmer's crops. And uh, another stile, thankfully this one's a bit drier. And then this is a railway bridge up ahead, but obviously <laughs> not much traffic comes across this. I especially love old bridges and I'm really developing a like of old bridges that are overgrown it's almost like a discovered lost world element to it Victorian bridges completely covered in weeds and grasses and plants we've still got a train line that's looking west that goes to Shrewsbury towards the Welsh borders. It's pretty narrow down there, about a hundred yard stretch where they've, uh, they've cut back the thicket hedge uh, during the winter months, but I bet it was a nightmare in the summer. It might even be unpassable. You have to keep my arms right in just to pass now and it's freshly cut back. So that's what it's like. That's a narrow bit, that's wider than it was. And uh, all cut back, only just about enough room. And then it comes out onto the little lane, but it's a private residence. You'd never know there's a footpath here. Look at this. There's a stile, but it looks very private. And there's a public footpath sign. It's not very visible. So there's private land over which the, uh, the footpath travels, but you can't travel left and right. There's no ways out. You've either got to backtrack right back to the road and then go all the way around, quite a long detour, or uh, plough on. Now, come left off the lane here. Now, I know this bit, I've done this bit before, but again, you would hardly know that the footpath was here. There's a rotten footpath signpost with a tiny little monarch's way sticker at the top in the middle of a bush. And this locked gate looks like private land so it's not that well signposted another little sticker on the post here but again it's just a sticker that's just yeah you know, there's the size of my thumb it's only that big on the subject of uh, the battle of worcester 1651 when your man charles ii king fled and came up this why i'm walking along here now the monarch's way. Um, interesting side story. Um, Charles II placed an order with a local uniform manufacturing company called the Worcester Clothiers Company or something like that. Um, back then at the time of the battle, 1651, and it was £434. And they never paid the bill. I suspect because he fled <laughs> or he didn't have the money um, anyway that bill remained unpaid right up until 2008 when Charles Prince of Wales ah oh, Charles the one that's still alive finally paid the bill 
without interest. <laughs> it would have been uh, £47,000 had they added the interest on, but Charles paid £434, so at least he settled the bill. I don't know if this is the moat. It's a little pond anyway. Could be a moat. Goes round to the left, look. Very grand looking farmhouse. And a nice looking track ahead. I'm gonna take a little detour. It's very nice. Looks like Croft Manor. Pendrel Hall. Wedding venue. It'd be a very nice place for a summer wedding, wouldn't it? We've even got sheep. Now Boscobel House is straight up there. About two, maybe three miles. Anyway, I'm going to turn right now off the Monarch's Way and down this side route, down a quiet lane. There, look, gap in the hedge, public footpath. So, through here. So, um, in years gone by, I've done fell walking and country walking mostly in the summer months, and as the autumn comes along. I don't tend to get out that much, um, or I haven't until now that is, and generally I get stuck into my sport and my Guinness and uh, enjoying the winter food and hardly any exercise and put weight on over winter. Lots of people do I suppose, but um, uh, I was determined not to let that happen this time. Well. I wanted the sport and the food and the beer, but I didn't want the weight that comes with it. So I just decided to do me 10,000 steps a day, keep topping it up. If I can keep my weight more or less the same as where it is, I don't have to be super fit. I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking to keep trim fit, that's all. Um, then when I do the West Highland Way, I should be able to hit my straps and hit the ground not running but you know what I mean um, so that's the thought I think it's the setting of a a distant goal a distant walk to keep my eye on the horizon in the, in the coming months I really loved it in the coast to coast when I decided I was going back in March and I finally went in July I had four months and I, I enjoyed the four months almost as much as the walk itself it sounds silly but I did so uh, I wanted to put something else into the into my diary to help me get over this winter period you know and hit next year just as strong as I finished this year and it's worked a treat nearly missed this turning again God, it'd, it'd be really hard to uh, follow the markers in summer with all the foliage it's only because there's no leaves on the trees I'm able to see the way markers anyway this uh, this is pretty rotten through there along here now and there are, uh, there are some pools down to the right that's where I just come from through that little paddock area and uh, I'm gonna cross a lane now with the church on the hill and the cemetery where we started off earlier. And up out to the church again. So that's the end of the walk. So from the church to the church, it's about um, six miles. Um, I've done about another two miles to get here in the first place, plus of course the three 
<laughs> when my battery ran out and I had to go home. Plus now two home, so I've, it was going to be a reasonably short walk, but I've got six plus uh, seven, that's be 13 mile for me. <laughs> Never mind, good for my legs. Anyway, I enjoyed that, that was good. The weather's held off, I thought it was going to rain in the afternoon, but uh, it stayed away and um, two miles back home. So uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>